Okay, so, Sean Davies, how you doing, man? I'm living the dream, how are you? Oh, exactly the same, my friend, exactly the same. <laughs> Excellent. Now, let's talk uh, Seraph. Yes, Seraph. I, I think I'm saying that right. It's not Seraph, is it? It's definitely Seraph. I, I believe it is Seraph, as in a Seraphin, as an angel. Ah! There you yes. go. Logic dictates yes. that's probably what it is. Um, it's, um, I imagine so. Okay, good. It's the uh, it's the brand new game from uh, Dreadbit, who of course we know from Ironcast, and um, yes, that was a game that we both very much enjoyed. That, that's very true. Ironcast was uh, a complete surprise. I expected it to be a simple match three, it turned out to be pretty awesome. Uh, in all the ways that you would never expect a match three game to be awesome, and I, I from what I've played, Seraph kind of follows that trend. I don't know about you. Uh, no, I completely agree. I remember because we've, uh, we've we've been talking about Seraph for what seems like all year now, and um, I I played it at Rest this year, back in back in February or March or April, or whatever it was, and yeah. um, I remember having a great time there. We spoke to. Uh, Dan Lieber, uh, Dreadbit Dan, as I tend to call him when he's not around. <laughs> um, you might, you got an interview with him, didn't you, earlier this year on PS Gamer? Um, no, because I was going to interview him and then um, he was sick during Rezd, so didn't manage to get one. Oh, I had an yeah. interview with him uh, tonight, but he couldn't make it. I see a trend developing here. <laughs> <laughs> do we smell I don't know <laughs> oh he knows he knows but uh, Seraph is out now and um, we've both been playing it um, what do you think so far uh, so far I'm, I'm pretty impressed um, It's it looks on the surface I look at this game and think yeah it looks like any other 2D platformer but there's a lot of kind of really underlying things that I didn't expect so the, the movement while on the ground seems very kind of sticky, but as soon as you get up in the air and you have like a jump, uh, you start to feel very, very acrobatic. So it's kind of mm -hmm. a, a really odd balance between moving along and making sure that you're jumping when you need to be, because moving on the ground never feels as, as, as nice as it does to be jumping through the air, even though standing still is quite easily the best way to shoot them. Even though the auto aim, so one of the, the one of the really odd things about Seraph is it has an auto aim, so you don't actually ever have to press a second stick to aim. You just have to press the left stick, and um, to move your character, and and Seraph will automatically aim as you press the fire button. That works 95% of the time. I've had a couple of really I don't know if you've experienced this where you, you kind of had a uh, you've been firing and suddenly. You're firing at a guy that's on the other side of a door. Uh, yes. Um, and this guy is surrounding you. Um, that's that's the only issue that I've, I've found with this so far. Um, is I think that's when I've triggered a door when I'm surrounded by enemies and, and that's the, the enemy's got on stuck on the other side of the door. So I'm firing at this guy anyway and I'm, I'm surrounded by enemies and have to pr mash all the other buttons to try and get rid of the people that are around me. But mm. most of the time that works and that's that works really well for a mechanic. I mean... They say don't if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and I tend to agree with that. And in, in here, it's it does feel like a bit of a gimmick. I'll be honest. Sure. Um, I don't think it was necessary. It does feel nice to play, um, but then it comes with the added flaws like we've just outlined, where you can end up just shooting a door for no reason. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Go on. Uh, what I find the most interesting about it. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but the animation of your central character, which is Seraph, um, is just fantastic. It's not something I sort of tend to pick up on, but just her movement is so... Her, I, actually, I shouldn't say her, because it's a non-gender character, which I've been made very clear yes. to me recently, so I apologise. But, um, yeah, uh, Seraph's, uh, Seraph's movement is... Um, it's really smooth and it looks very natural. It almost looks live action to some degree. Um, I think they really nailed her. Um, the it's oh god, 
Um, <laughs> I'm gonna oh, get the, the, the thumbs down on this video already. Uh, I can just feel them. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble. Um, your character's movement is, um, it's yeah, it's very slick. Um, I don't know if you've just noticed the move. If you just walk them, you know, they, they they seem to have a lot more. It doesn't feel like you're stopping starting. It always feels very smooth. They don't sort of come to an, an immediate stop. They just kind of slow down as they walk up. And I know it's a very small thing, but it's something that I noticed whilst playing. And um, I appreciate things like that. I like that. Yeah, I, I get a lot of... Um, did you play Transistor? Yes. Um, I get a lot of Transistor from, from Seraph. I get a lot, a lot of that vibe, the kind of sci-fi vibe, but not totally sci-fi. Um anchored in real worldness and it, I, I, I like that art style um, and you like to see the animation um, obviously when she's jumping around um, one of the one of the things that I've, I've just learned um, I say just learned um, I immediately knew about but I've just learned to be able to um, utilize properly is that you can hang from a wall and shoot at the same time but if you've got your dual shoot, um, wielding pistols you only shoot with one arm so I've I've now got to the point where I'm mm. shooting with both my pistols while running and jumping, and then as soon as I hit the wall, switching to my uh, other weapon um, and firing as much as I can, then jumping off and switching to the pistols again because I'm in the air and can shoot with both arms again. It's there's a lot of subtle nuances to this game that I really wasn't prepared for. <laughs> it just it, it and and also I, I don't know if you've seen the the. Um, Changing difficulty? Uh, yes, I was about to mention that, actually. Oh, see? Segway. There we go. <laughs> um, that is uh, something which I picked up on, on the um, in the demo that I played at Rezd. Um, whilst I was sitting there scuffing Werther's Originals, which was so kindly provided by Dreadbit, um, I noticed in the, in the corner there was a, a fluctuating number. And um, I asked Daniel, what is that? And he said, oh, that's your difficulty. I said, what? It's like, yeah, depending on how good you are at the game, the difficulty rises up and down. I said, wow, that's really cool. I haven't even noticed that before in a game, and I think that's a very smart move because, um, yeah, it can be... I think on the surface, an auto-shooting game like this may sound very simple. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, the shooting, yeah. the aiming is done for me, so I guess it's pretty straightforward. And it isn't. It's tough as balls, this game. And the game gets harder and harder the more you kind of wrap your head around it, uh, which I find yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, I've noticed now that I'm starting to get enemies. So you first start out with some kind of like dead space um, necromorph things that have like little spiky hands that run across the floor. Yes. And then you get these flying things that shoot orange balls at you. And then you start to get these the same enemies, but bigger, harder to kill, and they shoot purple balls that, that home onto you. And oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> these are the bane of me this right, right now. I, I keep dying and, and getting myself back to that point where they start to spawn again and dying again. I need to figure out how to deal with that enemy. But the, the enemy, the enemy difference, difficult. Um, sorry, enemy variety is is pretty impressive. How how some enemies need to be killed off with a melee attack. Some can just be blasted away, and and you can never really tell what the enemy's going to do. Yeah. I'm I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed with that so far. I think uh, something that I found that as I move into the later levels is that before I even make myself kind of aware to enemies, or at least try to, I kind of run around the level as much as I can to find um, like shotguns and machine guns and and yeah. things like that to try and um, to try and balance the level a bit because, um, like you said, those uh, the flying enemies, um, particularly them, they really, some of them take a bit of a Bit of bit, bit of time to get down, and um, I found myself sort of right. The pistols don't really do an awful lot of good on these bigger enemies, so I need to run out and find as much as I can to try and take them down. And when you come across a, uh, a machine gun of some kind, it's like, oh, thank God, finally! <laughs> and so I was like, right, come on, I am ready now. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, don't know, I guess maybe that's true of all games, especially on this one, because you're in such enclosed spaces and. Um, you know, for saving, like, just jumping around and being able to do, you know, the good old double jump or, like, the triple jump with the L2, um, yeah. where you can get even higher. It's uh, it's uh, fantastic. But, yeah, 
Um, the game doesn't take any prisoners. You know, you can no. health, health is around, but it's it's very scarce unless you really go looking for it. And so, yeah, yeah, you've the, the timing is so important in this game, and I think that to its credit, I think it's um, it's a benefit of the game, definitely because it can it can feel quite straightforward, but it just it isn't, and that's what I like about it so much. And I feel like um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I haven't got hugely far in it so far. Um, I've got my uh, my trophies, and I'm doing all right. Are you? Uh, it does have a platinum, which is a wonderful thing. It does. Uh, I you... don't think I'll be able to do it. You I, don't. I, I think you do. What... And uh, there's this there's, there's certain. Uh, I mean, you look at the trophy list and you think, oh, that's not too bad. And then I look at the fact that you've got to kill certain enemies, which only appear at like the super high difficulty. So I'm thinking, oh no, uh, I'm just not. I'll be honest with you. This this game. It's literally kicking my ass right now, um, and I think I, I probably shouldn't have started on the ultra high difficulty level because you do at the start you get a, <laughs> a selection of what you what what you want to start the game on. It's like normal, hard, ultra hard, and then they've got Twitch in- integration, which is pretty cool. You can mm-hmm. um, integrate the game with Twitch and have um, have two seconds. My dog's eating something. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dog eating my TV. Anyway, no, um, no, it's a yeah, bad, no, very yeah. cute dog. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so it's got Twitch integration as well, so um, you can add Twitch controls so that people can make the game harder or easier on you um, by the Twitch chat. Tra- Twitch chat. <laughs> um, but I, I'm finding the game to be quite a struggle. I'll be honest. Um, okay. Not not because it's not enjoyable, just because I think the the difficulty balancing does a reasonably good job of always keeping it as a challenge. So, but yes. I think what I found myself um, absolutely steaming through. So I found a, a double double damage and a Mark II assault rifle, um, and was mowing through enemy after enemy after enemy, and then I ran out of bullets and double damage ran out. And then uh. phasing off against that lieutenant just right, right at that point. <laughs> and <we're, laughs> so I decided to try and run away, and then it'll be like 16 different enemies all chasing me around as I just ran away. Um, and I, I totally balls that up. But yeah, it was. Um, it, it's a great game for those kind of. Because I'll be honest with you, my arse cheeks are constantly clenched when I'm playing this game. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just such, just such a tough game. Um, but I imagine if I was to continue to fail, it would get easier. So perhaps that's where I should do. Maybe, maybe. Um, are you uh, are you uh, doing the upgrades? Are you making sure Seraph is at the top of their game? Yeah, I've just put some crystals in some things, and I don't really understand the whole RPG element of it completely. I'm, I'm kind of making sure that I'm, I'm playing enough of it to um, to get the most out of the action side of it. Um, mm. I just uh, transmorphed my gun. Oh, dogs. Dogs! <laughs> Neville, Neville, come here. Fireworks. Anyway, sorry. Um, That's cool, man. So I just transmorphed my gun, and uh, I've, I've got a new um, uh, aspect of the gun, which allows me to take bits of people off. Um, I really wasn't expecting that RPG element of it, and there is quite a lot of RPG elements with, with loot and upgrades and crystals you can stick in things to give you 5% boosts on this. And yes. I, I really wasn't expecting that. Yeah, there's an awful lot of depth to the game, actually, which is um, is unexpected. I think there's it's it's going to be a game which you, you do need to spend time with, I think, if you're going to get the most out of it. Mm. If you're going to get um, kind of their... Their vision of this game is, is I think, quite exciting in the sense that there's an awful lot to discover and there's a lot to learn about the game. Um, it's almost as if the auto shooting is just, it's like, yeah, that happens too, but look at everything else that this game does as well. Yeah. And um, but that seems to be the headliner, which um, which is interesting because there's so much more to this game. I think it will appeal to uh, fans of um, like RPG upgrading and. Um, and, and platformers as well, because it feels like a 2D platformer, but it's definitely got those 
because there's RPG elements. There's a lot of games mushed into one here, I think. Yeah, and I, I think it works. I, I think that's a, a one thing to point out because you know this is this this doesn't feel like a 2D platformer that tacked on RPG elements to to make it more appealing to that sound. I think all of these ideas have come from the same melting points early on mm. and are kind of intrinsic to its design. So it, it, it all feels like it works and it all gels together. There isn't like a, a thing that sticks out as really odd being tacked on, um, apart from maybe the auto-aim, which I, I still think is a pretty cool thing to play along with, but I'm not sure... Um, whether I'd want it on a full game and I'll obviously let you know that's the case when I get to the full game um, obviously Dreadbit's previous game had a pretty unusual plot twist shall mm. we say Yes. Um, there, is, there is a plot here that I, I'm following along with I'm quite enjoying um, so obviously you're an angel and you've been in captivity and then something's happened and you're now being helped, and I'm, I'm really curious as to where this story is going. Um, so, but are you getting any inklings of any any major twists? Um, I'm starting to. Neville, come on, dude. Neville. No. Um... No. <laughs> I'm starting to. No. Uh, the guide is. Uh, he's helpful for now. Um, but I think there's, I, th- I think there's a darker undertone. Um, although it doesn't help that every time his kind of dialogue pop- pops up on the screen, similar to Ironcast in that way, the dialogue is written rather than spoken. And um, yeah, I found myself using like How Three Thousands voice, like I can't let you do that, <laughs> Seraph. <laughs> you must understand, yeah, um... someone human must have unleashed the monsters upon you, Seraph. Uh, that's what I find myself doing quite a lot. So we're going to take some of the drama out of it for me, but that's just me. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently imagining um, Drinklage Bot. <laughs> so from the Destiny Drinklage Bot voice is, is going for me. Oh, um, so it's like, does that make <laughs> like oh. a half ass performance? <laughs> oh, Sarah, just get out, we please. <laughs> We've woken the hive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to Seraph. <laughs> <laughs> I just want my paycheck. Can I go now? <laughs> <laughs> so, impressions so far. Then, can we can we give impressions of score? Uh, I don't know. Um, so far for me, it's a solid silver. Um, it, it is. It hasn't grabbed me immediately, much like uh, Iron Gas did. Iron Gas, I think, with its setting and with its kind of mechanics, it was quite interesting and quite unique. Um, this feels like an amalgamation of so many different things, but everything they're doing, they're doing well so far. Um, yeah. I've still got a lot to do. I've still got a lot to see. And um, you're right, it is, it's tough and it kicks your ass. But um, it just uh, it kind of makes you a better player in that sense as well because, much like every other game, you just work out how to do it eventually. Um, I think it requires a lot more exploration when you get to these levels. These levels are randomly generated, so it's not like we can talk people through it. But, um, yeah. yeah, I found myself uh, exploring the levels a bit more before kind of attacking the... Uh, if I if I see an arrow, I was like, okay, that's where I need to go. I'll head off somewhere else for now and see what I can find. Because yeah. nine times out of ten, there's normally a big-ass monster that you need to destroy before you can get past it and yeah. break the big heart thing that's on the garage door that is the level or something. I don't know. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, one thing, I, I do like the, the presentation of the menus are really nice as well. The game just looks nice. It looks um, very Kingsman-esque. I don't know where, where I get that from, but um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. What about you? You have 30 seconds. I, I really enjoyed this so far. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to where it's going. I'm hoping that it's going to have some pretty awesome plot twist. And, yeah, looking forward to finishing it off. <laughs> so is Neville, obviously. And Neville agrees as well. Uh, okay, yes. well that was um, that was our impressions of uh, Seraph, which is available now on PlayStation Four. Um, it's been available on Steam for a while, but hey, who cares about that? So uh, that's uh, Seraph, which is at the pricely lovely sum of eight ninety nine if you're a PS Plus member, which is a great deal because you're getting a lot of game for nine pounds. So do look into it. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Look out for more on Seraph on Thumb Culture.
Bye-bye.